So I know this may be a bit far from my usual content, but I need to address a major problem that has inaccurately labeled people as healthy and not for quite a while. The BMI scale. It's supposed to be used as a tool for determining a healthy weight, but it has many flaws that I'm going to talk about. First off, the one that should be the most obvious is that not all of your weight is body fat. You have your weight from all sorts of different things in your body, like muscle and bone density, which the scale does not take into account. Second of all, it was made back in the 1830s, which brings so many problems. First age-based problem is that it was made 40 years before the second industrial revolution. In fact, the first one hadn't even finished yet, which means that there were more people working in farming along with less processed food like we have today, which is especially problematic if you live in US-occupied territory, where even UK ketchup is basically healthy food in comparison with their U.S. counterparts, because woohoo, lack of corporate regulation! Second age-based problem is, of course, this was still well into the time when most Western countries really only cared about white men. So if you're not white, or even purely white like I am, or if you're a woman in general, wait a minute. Okay, I'm honestly surprised I have that many females watching me. Either way, if you're not a purely white man, chances are is it's probably not taking a lot of your genetics into account. Speaking of which, genetics also play a major role. Because if your genetics leave you with unaverage proportions, then that's also going to skew the results quite a bit. I have quite the experience with this, as just like my father, I have wider shoulders and a taller torso than average to where I need to order my shirts in extra tall sizes. So for me and other people with this problem, we don't have to lose as much weight to be considered skinny as most people. It's to the point where if I or most of my family followed the BMI scale for what is considered an ideal weight, we'd be horribly anorexic. My grandma even said it straight to my face that was the case for her. Of course, genetics can also play into metabolism, because some people can be blessed with being able to eat a dozen donuts and barely gain any weight if at all. But if their genetics also gave them thick bones, then they could be quite skinny and still be considered overweight by the BMI scale. Third HB's problem is technology. Not only advances in modern medicine that allow us to live longer and healthier, but also also just automation. Like, we take our washer and dryer for granted, but back as recently as the 1950s, a lot of people were still washing their clothes by hand, which of course took a lot more labor and thus burned more calories. So nowadays, most people have to make a consistent effort to exercise. Many people like myself are too busy juggling current responsibilities to go to the gym for hours just to avoid being criticized by random people online, who I probably won't remember a couple days later unless they say something incredibly unique, which most don't. In in fact, many sources, including the NIH, BBC, Penn Medicine, and countless others, have pointed out that fat shaming actually has negative effects on people, causing depression, emotional eating, affects cardiovascular and metabolic health, and even causes people to avoid exercise. Which I can definitely confirm this, as when I have showed my face anonymously, I have been fat shamed quite a bit, even though to me, while I may not have a great jawline, I still only have a dad bod compared to my proportions, and I'm also on medications which has me gaining weight as a side effect. But to a lot of people I show my face to, they can't tell the difference between a dad bod and a obese, so they start making jokes about double chins, making earthquakes, and just overall I have to keep my guard up when showing my face on VC because of this ignorant fat shaming. And I'm sure they think this is going to motivate me to lose weight so I'm not being fat shamed anymore, when in reality it just leads to depression and me thinking, what's the point in trying to lose weight when people are still going to fat shame me, even if I put in the maximum effort I can while still being able to juggle everything else and not burn myself out. But fat shaming has become a major problem in today's culture, with many people perception of a normal weight being lined up with the BMI scale, which when you consider the many factors that often lead people to underestimate an ideal weight for someone, that often leads to unrealistic expectations that could affect a person's health way more than just being what the internet delusions people into thinking is fat or obese. So what should we do? Well, I would argue that before you get after someone for being fat, maybe get a bit more context by asking about their diet if the rest of their family has the same problems, or if they're taking medications. And instead of shaming them, try showing them some incentive on why they should lose weight, because incentive is the ultimate motivator. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, as the majority of you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video. Matani!